Good afternoon. My name is Alan Tracy. I work as a business coach. So those of you in the room really are the most fortunate people at the exhibition today because what you're going to hear has more value than the winning numbers for the lottery tickets. But only if you put it in action. And when I sit down with clients, I normally just ask them two questions. And the first question is, what is it that you actually want? What is it that you actually want from your business? And as always, I want a million pounds in the bank by the 31st of December, 2020. So they know all the good stuff about smart goals and they have everything sorted. And it's always far enough away that they don't have to do anything about it now. And that's the way it works. And that means that they don't get any results, of course. And the second question I asked them is, why is this important to you? Why is this actually important to you? The first thing gives them an idea of where they're going to go. The second thing is, what gets them out of bed in the morning? So where does the motivation come from? And if they don't connect with it at an emotional level, it's not going to happen. Uh, I met Sean two years ago, and he sat down and he asked me, uh, can I trust you? And I said, Sean, you asked me to meet you. At some level, you must think that you can. He said, well, I got your name from my biggest customer, and you work with him. I need to know that you're not going to say anything to him about what I have to tell you. And I said, guaranteed, we're trained as an accountant. I, if I told somebody, well, I'd have to kill myself before I could tell them. The only way I could tell them was through the spirit world. So that's the training we have. So in any event, he trusted me. And he said, well, it's just simple. And in actual fact, he was, uh, he, he know the last speaker because he's in exports. Last month, I had a heart attack. And if I told my key customer, I think I'd lose the account. That's how serious it is. And it was a serious heart attack. And I'm in the business 21 years, and I love the business. And I don't mind the 65, 70 hours, genuinely, I don't. I come over here on a Saturday afternoon to work and stuff. I love it that much. But the doctor told me that if I don't reduce my working life, if I don't reduce the stress of my body, my mind, my heart, down to a normal 35, 40 hour week, I'm going to be dead in six months. Now, I need to get control of my life, I need to get control of time. So, I was in automatic mode, so I wanted to ask him, so why is this important to you? But I, I let it go. Being dead is not so good. So, the following month, Sean came in and I, he, he was in a sweat and I thought they changed his tablets or something. But what had actually happened was, he said, for the first time ever in 21 years, I didn't open the place and close the place. Okay, I didn't open the place and close the place. That's not the important thing. The important thing is, I'm happy about that. So, he had achieved results because we had busted the ass of the general manager, put them back into logistics taking the office manager and made them the general manager because they knew what they were actually doing. And she kept them informed about what was happening. So that was good. So, I'm giving away my secrets here by, by saying to you that I very simply ask, ask the question, what is it that you want? Why is that important to you? And the second part of it is, once you know what it is you want, then you have to know what you have to give up to make that happen. So, some people call that knowing the price. So for Sean, it meant that he had to take somebody in, give them the responsibility, hold them accountable, and he had to let go. And that was a big thing for him. By the following January, he started work with me in August. By the following January, his working week was down to Monday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, 20 hours a week. And here's the good thing. If he didn't show up on Friday, if he didn't show up on Monday, it didn't matter. Interestingly enough, he said, I have an awful lot of loose time in my hands now. Remember the bit that you said that I wasn't worried about, about the business development? Well, actually, I have time to do that now. And this guy went from 16 customers, got three new A-class customers, and went to 18 customers. He took great, yeah, you know, there are two types of accounts, three types of accounts in the world, aren't there? Those that can add and those that can't. So, um, he had great pleasure in going to one of his clients and saying, I'm not working with you anymore, you're too much trouble. So he was very much get what he wanted. So rule number one, know what it is that you want. Rule number two, know what it is that you have to do to get the results. And rule number two, three, you know, that's the Nike one. Just do it. You know, take massive action.
as Tony Robbins might say. Incidentally, and by the way, it's not going to happen the way that you think it is, so that's why you're building a system of feedback, and the feedback is actually holding yourself accountable. So, first thing you do is write down everything that you want. I want a million pounds, I want more sales, I want more time off, I want a great love life with my wife. Well, am I projecting here? Sorry. Um, so, you write everything down and then you decide, okay, which of these is most important? And I think one of the big mistakes that we make in business is that we give people too much to do. We ask them to do three or four things. Billy is laughing there because I was talking to him beforehand and he says, well, I want them to get the leads. I want them to qualify the leads. I want them to get an opportunity to quote and I want them to follow up and close the deal. That gets too confusing for most of us. You know, we should just say to them, close the deal. That's it. That's the most important thing. All I'm interested in are closed deals. And then, so, we make the mistake of giving people two and three and four bits of things to do. Now, in order to close deals, of course you have to get the leads, of course you have to qualify them, of course you have to get the quotes out. But he knows that if, he, if they actually have four quotes out, that that's one thing. But not worth it down if he hasn't got three of them closed. Apparently the girls are getting 75% at the moment. So. Um, so focus on one thing, if you decide there are five or six things, focus on one thing that you can have. And some people have a bit of difficulty with that. I want the million pounds, I want the cash flow, I want the time off. And so then you say, well okay, if you can have a 20 hour working week, but you can't have the one million, which will you go for? Well, it's not a million. Okay, so you don't want the 20 hour working week as much. And if you can have um, the profit, but you can't have the cash flow, which will you go for? I go for the cash flow. So that really tells you where their focus is, or where your focus is. So you can't have everything, but you can always have the most important thing. And a great way then of doing that is, once you've established what the most important thing is, try and establish what's the one major change. You know, people call it a bag, or a beehive, a big audacious goal, or a big hairy audacious goal. What's the one big action that you need to take in order to make all of this happen? and stay focused on that action. So in Billy's case, he just needs them, the action that will get the results. So all he needs to do is, I need you to get quotes out to people who are qualified. Does that work for you, Billy? Yeah. yeah okay. So, and uh, the other bit there, both uh, uh, just things which matter most should never be at the mercy of things which matter least. Um, I always think of, you know when you're going home in the car at 6 o'clock, you, you know the last phone call that you make before you leave the office? I'll be home in five minutes. So, um, but you're on the way home in the car and it's the kids' birthday party and you're, you're already running late and the phone call comes in, there's a problem at work. On a show of hands, in all honesty, who here is going to go back and deal with the problem at work? Nobody! Oh, fantastic! Okay, how many liars are there in the room? On a show of hands, who here tell a lie today? So, um, you really need to take that very seriously. I had my ass kicked. The boss called me in and said, uh, so Alan, uh, what's your working day like? And I said, uh, I'd normally be in about eight, and I'd be gone by six. I said, okay, eight to six. I, I can live with that, 10 hour working day. You work hard, you do it. You're a liar. I've actually had security check your records in and out, and your average working day is 12 hours, 43 minutes. And that's only what you do here without logging in. So here's the deal, you're the best financial controller we ever had. But I'm not interested in you being dead in six months. I want you here in four years. So I'm telling you now, if you don't do something about your time management, and you'll do something about what you're doing, and slow down a little bit, and keep your working hour, to 10 hours and actually get to see those kids, have a relationship with your children. Well, I don't actually want you working with me. So, I think that's a chat that we all have to have with ourselves at some stage about what's important. So, now I know what it is that I have to do. Now I know what's the most important thing that I can do. And then you have to look at yourself. So I had one client who said, well, my biggest problem is I 
not good at getting the invoices out, I'm not good at the cash collection. So I need to build up my skills in that area. And I said, how much would you get a bookkeeper for? He said, maybe $10, $15 an hour. My words, not his, $15, 15 euro an hour. So, and I said, how much can you make in your best time? He said, uh, $100, $200 an hour. $100, 200 euro an hour. So, I'm saying, do you, do you see where this is to make sense? You know, you can pay somebody for 20 hours to do all of the administration for 300, and in two hours work, you'll get that back. So, that's the point. This is something else I learned. We don't actually get better by doing the rubbish or trying to cover up the things that we're bad at. That's the sort of thing that you outsource or you get somebody else to work on. So, just look at all of those things that you have to look at, but come back to what is it that I'm really, really good at. Stay focused on that and stay focused on the one issue. So, I've already given you the answer to this. What is the winning factor? Now, the winning factor is focused action, knowing exactly what it is that you're doing, knowing exactly why it is that you're doing it, and then just focusing on, okay, getting the results. And like I said, the system of feedback and accountability is absolutely critical. So on a regular basis, you sit down. Billy has to sit down every month or every week or even every day if he likes. And he says, okay guys, what actually went well this week? Did we actually get four new clients signed up? Yes or no? It's that simple. But what went well? I got the quotes out, I got the qualified leads, they're right, they're in our target market, you know, all the accounts in the world love us. We made a good presentation up in City West. All this stuff went well. Great. What did you do that could go better? Well, actually, we could have closed a couple of sales. So, how, what are we actually going to have to change to make that happen? And that has to be as regular as it needs to be. So, if it's on a weekly basis, if it's on a daily basis, that's, that's what you do. And it's not enough just to do the changes, you need to affect the changes. For a lot of business owners, that's actually really, really challenging and difficult to do. Most of the time, you spend on your own. So, that's what you need your business coach or your non executive director. You need somebody external. Now, when I started, I actually was tic tacking with uh, another coach, another business coach. And I was sitting down with them every week, having breakfast. And, uh, you know, when he had a problem, then one of the kids got sick and he didn't achieve his objectives. I said, so, uh, you know, that's perfectly understandable and that's perfectly reasonable, you know. And then when I stood up and didn't get to the accounts out or whatever it was, if I missed up on he said, look, you know, that's not the most important thing. But we had agreed to hold ourselves accountable, so that didn't work. So now I have to pay somebody to kick my ass. Is that the expression? So um, when you pay, when it's funny, <laughs> I was uh, I was with a client yesterday, and uh, um, I yeah I was asking him, well how did you get on in the last week? He said, well my accountant is fuming with me. I said, why is your accountant fuming with you? He said, I'm afraid to tell him I've, I've taken on a, a financial controller because he's been telling me to do it for years. And I said, well, so it was good advice. Why didn't you take it? And he said, well, I wasn't paying him, you know, as much as I didn't think I was paying him as much as I'm paying you. So it's the whole idea that if you give something for nothing or for free, there's not a great value placed on it. So don't be afraid to place a value on you and what you do best and stay focused on that. So has anybody any questions or any matters they'd like to raise at this stage? Because that's where the winning number comes from, folks. When you decide, know what it is that you want. Know what you have to give up to achieve it. Take massive action. And then build in a system of accountability. Sean had lost 32,000 the year before I met him. Even though he wasn't in the place for most of the following year, he made 52,000. And this year his target is 150,000. And I've loads and loads of stories about that, but it is absolutely, it is just about the critical element of taking action on a focused basis. Hopefully you can implement it. I have um, a couple of pages I hand out, just for the first 10 people who can actually hear me, down in the back they can't hear me, so it doesn't matter and um, I'll pass those out and if anybody wants to catch up with me later, that's all good. <laughs>